Welcome to the Amphenol Broadband Solutions product installation training on the DOCSIS passive device model IPG H3M4-BF. In this training, we'll provide a DOCSIS passive overview, show the DOCSIS passive port layout, explain the port functions, show MOCA and cable TV signal flow, show different wiring configurations, and compare losses to traditional devices. First, we'll look at the MOCA physical topology to understand the challenges of the MOCA signal. Physically, it looks the same as a traditional cable topology. In this example, a two-way splitter with each output port feeding another two-way splitter, which is equal to a four-way splitter. I broke it down by two-way splitters, as it'll help when I show the signal flow later. The MOCA devices are installed similar to the way a standard set-top box is installed. When we look at the logical topology, this is where the big difference is between a MOCA network and a traditional cable network. With the MOCA network, any MOCA-enabled device within the home can communicate with any other MOCA-enabled device in the home, where in a traditional cable network, the communication passes from the head end to each device and from each device back to the head end. So if we look back at the physical topology, the MOCA signal will flow and communicate between any MOCA-enabled devices and uses the port-to-port -port isolation path of the splitters with a loss of greater than 25 dB. For traditional cable TV services, its signal was never intended to go from one output port to the other. In fact, we relied on the port-to-port -port isolation to prevent a cable service on one port from interfering with a service on a different port. With MOCA, since it is an in-home network, it needs to communicate throughout the house, and the only way to do that is between output ports of the splitters. Each MOCA signal path normally will travel through one port-to-port -port isolation path. If there are more than two MOCA devices, now the signal will go through the insertion loss of one splitter. And just a note, insertion loss of traditional 5 to 1002 MHz splitters at MOCA frequencies from 1125 to 1675 MHz will be between 5 to 8 dB. In these examples, we'll use 7 dB. The signal then flows through the port-to-port -port isolation of greater than 25 dB of a second splitter and another insertion loss of 7 dB of a third splitter for a total loss of 39 dB or greater. This is only the loss through the splitter and doesn't include the cable outlet loss. Here we have an 8-way splitter by adding a third layer of 2-way splitters. If the MOCA signal needed to go between ports 1 to 8, it would go through two layers of insertion loss of 7 dB each, a port-to-port -port isolation path of greater than 25 dB, and two more layers of insertion losses of 7 dB each for a total loss of 53 dB, which is quite a bit of loss, and again this is just through the splitter and does not take into account the outlet cable losses. So with traditional splitters, we have several port-to-port -port isolation paths with different losses. Ports 1 to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, and 7 to 8 are called adjacent ports and have the least amount of loss. Port groups 1 to 4 and 5 to 8 are called semi-adjacent ports with a port-to-port -port isolation of a four-way splitter. And port groups between 1 to 4 and 5 to 8 are called non-adjacents and have the most amount of loss. So this is where knowing about port-to-port -port isolation comes into play for a MOCA installation. Here I'm showing an 8-way splitter with four MOCA devices connected to it. The X1 controller is connected to port 1, and there's an XI terminal device on port 2. These are connected by adjacent ports and have the least amount of loss between them. Between the X1 controller and the XI terminal device on port 3, these are connected by a semi-adjacent ports and have a bit more loss, but MOCA should work fine. Between the X1 controller and the XI terminal device on port 8, these are connected by non-adjacent ports and have the highest amount of loss. This may or may not work for MOCA depending on the outlet losses. So to improve the MOCA performance, move the X1 terminal device up to a non-adjacent port. Here I'm showing a couple styles of 8-way splitters. In order to put MOCA devices on the ports with the least amount of loss, you need to know which ports are adjacent 
semi-adjacent, and non-adjacent, which isn't always clear and can be a challenge knowing which ports to connect to. So at Amphenol Broadband, we looked at MOCA challenges through existing splitters and looked at ways to improve the MOCA communications between all ports. We saw that only the XG controller and the XB gateways need standard cable TV frequencies from 5 to 1002 MHz to receive content and connect to the internet. This content is then shared to the XI terminal devices via the MOCA frequencies. So no standard cable TV frequencies are needed to the XI terminal devices. So we can limit only MOCA frequencies to the XI terminal devices, and by doing so, we can redesign the splitter to have less port-to-port -port isolation between these ports. Also, if we limit certain ports to only pass MOCA frequencies, if any ingress is on those outlets at the return frequencies, it cannot pass through to the input port and get into the HFC's return path. So this will help reduce ingress as well. So we created a brand new type of device to have the least amount of port-to-port -port isolation called the DOCSIS passive device. Let's take a look at the port layout and their function on the DOCSIS passive device. It's in a small compact housing with all ports facing in the same direction for easy installation. The input port is located in the upper left and is identified with a white port color. In the lower left is one of three hybrid ports. This passes both cable TV and MOCA frequencies and is identified with a blue port color. This port is a low loss port. This port will support X1 and XB devices. To the right of the input and the blue hybrid port are two high loss hybrid ports identified with the green port colors. These ports will support X1 and XB as well. On the right side are four MOCA ports identified with a black port color. The XI terminal devices would be connected to these ports. There are two TrueFlex tabs that provide flexible mounting options as well. On the side is a label for easy port identification when mounted horizontally. Let's take a look at the internal components of the DOCSIS device. It's made up of three components. First is an unbalanced three-way splitter that is fed from the input port. The 4dB low loss leg feeds the blue H1 hybrid port. The two 7.5 dB high loss legs feed the two high loss H2 and H3 hybrid ports. At each of the hybrid ports is a diplex filter. One side of the diplex filter passes only cable TV frequencies from 5 to 1002 megahertz and is connected to the input port through the three-way splitter. The other side of the diplex filters only passes MOCA frequencies from 1125 to 1675 megahertz. These feed a bi-directional low-loss MOCA splitter that feeds four MOCA-only ports. The DOCSIS passive device only needs enough signal for a three-way splitter to properly service the DOCSIS devices. Let's look at the signal flow through the DOCSIS device for an X1 DVR installation using an XG1 controller, three XI device terminals, and an XB3 gateway. First, we'll follow the traditional cable TV frequency path. The input port will pass traditional cable TV frequencies from 5 to 1002 MHz. From the input port, the signal flows to the blue low loss H1 hybrid port, where we'll connect the XB3 gateway. The input port also feeds the two hybrid high loss ports. On the top H2 port, we'll connect the XG1 controller. In this example, we won't be using the bottom H3 port, so we'll add a terminator to this port. Now let's look at the MOCA signal path. The XB3 gateway needs to transmit and receive MOCA frequencies to communicate to the other MOCA devices such as the XG1 controller. So the hybrid H1 port also passes MOCA frequencies from 1125 to 1675 MHz. The same thing applies to the H2 hybrid port as the XG1 controller needs to communicate to the XI device terminals at the MOCA frequencies. The XI device terminals need to communicate with the XG1 controller at the MOCA frequencies only, and there's no need for traditional cable TV frequencies at these devices. This is what separates the DOCSIS device from traditional cable TV splitters, as the DOCSIS device only passes MOCA frequencies to the XI device terminals. The loss between any MOCA port is 16 dB or less, 
and 28 dB or less between any hybrid or mocha port, providing excellent mocha communications. It's a good engineering practice to terminate any unused ports. Since the input port is isolated from the mocha frequencies, no mocha frequencies will exit the input port. In installations where the controller or gateway are co-located with an XI device terminal, you can add an external splitter at that location. To do this, feed the outlet from the blue HI port. Since this is a low loss 4 dB port, by adding the splitter, the loss is balanced out to about the same as it is to the devices on the H2 and H3 ports. What if you need to add additional MOCA devices? Keep in mind that you should always try to have an installation ratio of 1 XG controller for every 3 XI terminals in a customer's home. The use of a secondary XG2 controller should be used if the need for more than 3 XI terminals are needed. Let's add an XG2 controller and a fourth XI device terminal. Connect the XG2 controller to the H3 hybrid port and install the fourth XI device terminal to the unused port. Additional XI device terminals can be added by splitting the MOCA ports. The black MOCA only ports have low port to port isolation loss. Therefore, by splitting these ports will have minimal to no impact on the XI terminals. If you have a need for a third XG controller device within the home's configuration, you can split the blue low loss port to add a third additional XG2 controller. This would allow you to add additional XI terminals if needed. We've just looked at a few configurations, and from these you can see how you can configure additional installation scenarios. Let's look at the MOCA losses of a typical MOCA installation through the DOCSIS device compared to a traditional 8-way splitter. We'll look at the loss from the XG1 controller to the other devices. On the DOCSIS device from the XG1 to the HI port, less than 25 dB. To any of the MOCA ports, less than 28 dB. Next we'll look at the 8-way splitter where I'm showing the adjacent, semi-adjacent, and non-adjacent ports. From the XG1 to the XB3, 25 dB or greater to the semi-adjacent XI device, 39 dB or greater, to the non-adjacent, 53 dB or greater. Next we'll compare it to the traditional 8-port amplifier, where I'm showing the adjacent, semi-adjacent, and non-adjacent ports. From the XG1 to the XB3, 25 dB or greater, to the semi-adjacent XI device, 39 dB or greater, to the non-adjacent 53 dB or greater. So you can see the signal loss advantage at the MOCA frequencies that the DOCSIS passive device has over traditional devices. The DOCSIS device is passive and at installations where there isn't enough DOCSIS signal a MOCA amplifier can be used. The MOCA amplifier has low port to port isolation as well. With the MOCA amplifier the passive port can be used for MOCA and has a loss from the XG1 controller of less than 30 dB, to the adjacent ports less than 25 dB, to the semi-adjacent ports less than 30 dB, and to the non-adjacent ports less than 35 dB. Included with the DOCSIS device package are color-coded tags. There are two color-coded tags that correspond to each of the ports. The first tag would be wrapped around the cables at the DOCSIS device, to indicate which cable is connected to, blue to the H1 port, green to the H2 and H3 ports, and black to the MOCA ports. The tags would be wrapped around the cables and the tag ends pressed to each other to form a flag. The other tags would be placed at the outlet locations to indicate which ports they're connected to back at the DOCSIS device. These tags will help with troubleshooting and also to know which ports to connect them to if they ever become disconnected. In order to keep track of which accounts the DOCSIS passive devices are installed in, it needs to be inputted either into TechNet or Tech360. Currently it's indicated as a MOCA splitter, but it will be changing to a DOCSIS passive. Let's review what we've covered in this training on the DOCSIS device. We provided an overview of the DOCSIS device, show the DOCSIS device layout and port colors, explain the port functions, showed the MOCA and cable TV signal flow, 
showed several optional wiring configurations, and compared the losses to traditional devices. Thank you for viewing this product training on the DOCSIS Passive device. For additional training topics, see our website at www.comcast.amphenolbroadband.com.